Hello, Stubby here, and today we are checking out Timberborn. Uh, I played this game for probably about 30, 45 minutes earlier, and it was a lot of fun, and I went, you know what? I'm going to share it with y'all. So if you guys like it, I'm going to keep recording it, we'll do it together, and have our fun. So Timberborn itself is basically a game, it's a city building-ish game based around beavers. So to start with, you get the folktales faction. They're easy, hardworking folktales are expert farmers. They respect nature and it rewards them with plentiful bounties. Uh, and when you get an average well-being of 11, you can unlock the Iron Teeth, who uh, mastered iron and science to build advanced machinery. All right, so we're going to go. There's a lot of different maps you can start on. There's Plains, Canyon, Diorama, Lakes, Meander, so on and so on. We're just going to start with this uh, recommended one. And the difficulty levels are based on uh, how many resources you start with and the droughts. The droughts basically affect your water supply. Beavers, water. Makes sense, right? The droughts start small and get uh, bi bigger, longer every time. So the difficulty basically is how severe the, the droughts are from the beginning and how much resources you start with. So we'll just go with normal and we will check it out. Takes a minute, but it was definitely fun. It was it was creative in the way they made it, and it is awesome. You the end of concept is you'll have to control the water. You build all this other stuff to provide food, power, buildings, but at the end you need water and the control of water, making dams, reservoirs, that kind of stuff. That's that was like the main function of this. So let's call this Stubby Topia. Why not? So you start with this district. Now, you can have multiple districts, basically independent towns, and the boundaries do grow. I don't know if there's a, I think there's an actual limit to the boundaries. Uh, and I'm going to skip the tutorial. Ah, uh, we might as well run through it. It does help you in the right sense. So we're gonna wanna make paths. Paths are how all the beavers travel. We're gonna need to make a lumberjack flag and it's going to want us to make two of them so we'll put looking at where they are put one right here for now and we'll make another path just run it straight down and we'll put our other lumberjack flag right there so it can encompass all of them and the next thing you're going to need to do is let them get built and select which areas to harvest, which is this cut trees right here. Oop, there we go. We're going to just cut like that and like that. Now we're going to need to build a water pump. I said water is the necessity of this game. Uh, so looking at where we want to put it, it has to be partially on land, partially in water. And we'll go ahead and put it over here for now. I think it'll be a good spot. I like that spot, honestly, because it could fit two of them right next to each other. Hmm. Just two right there? Yeah. Yeah, we'll do it right here. That works good. And we'll want to make a path to that. Additionally, we're going to want to make storage for our water. So we'll go ahead and build up ourselves a little bit of a storage. I want to say the tutorial called for six. Oh, that was some good math right there. Accidental spacing. And we're going to need to make a gatherer for these berries. So we'll go ahead and put them right there, along with a path to that one. 
and we're going to need to make our farmers. So farmers make the food. So looking at where we want to do, the green grass is, is basically irrigated land. And we're going to have to make decisions because we want it to be on irrigated land and we don't want to take up too much of it for other resources. So we'll put a farmer right there. And to start with, we will just plant carrots. So you can do carrots, potatoes, and wheat. Uh, now the thing with the food I figured out is carrots is the just eat it as it is. They can eat it all the time. The potatoes, I believe they can eat, but it, they're a second step that you would do with the potatoes to make them better. And then the wheat has a three-step process. So we're just doing a giant carrot field. And we'll do one on this side too. this side. Some easy pass for these guys. There we go. Alright, so after these water pumps and all that stuff is built, uh, we'll make that one the priority. Two are hired, we have our workers, and they're gonna build the uh, water pump. You see it takes 12 logs and a beaver employee. So we have to build the gatherer flag, which is already being tasked, so we'll go ahead and make that the next priority. Next things we need, so they'll need uh, wood storage. Uh, where is it? Right here, storage. We'll need to make wood storage, warehouses, and housing for them. So what I think I'm gonna do for the housing is, checking on the district, I think I'm gonna move the housing over into this area. Now the cool thing with the housing is you can actually stack it, so that's kinda cool. Uh, any building, as you look, like these ones have peaked roofs, some of them will have flat roofs. And it'll tell you when you're looking at it, the second line there says solid, other buildings can be built on top of it. Come on. Dam. The other thing I want to build as soon as I possibly can is a dam because I want to beat the drought. So looking at where my locations are, I'm thinking we will build a dam across right here. That looks like a good spot. It'll hold plenty of water for us. It'll back it up the river. And they're nice and simple. So the dam would go right along. Right here. Thinking right there. That looks like a good spot right there. And with the cool things about dams is you can put paths across the top of them. So now hopefully these guys will get us some wood, get that cleared out, and they will start producing. Stop sleeping, guys. Until they have houses, they'll just sleep on the ground. Look at him go. Now with these beavers, I'm going to slow down time. Uh, the other thing you have to look at is they have oh, stats. They have basic needs, uh, hunger, thirst, sleep, shelter. They have low nutritional needs. They have their social life, aesthetics, and off uh, knowledge, spirituality. So all these things will account for their whole well-being. You start with, what is it, 11 of them? They can make more, and they can also die of old age, they can die of hunger, so on and so on. So they won't make any more unless there's vacant housing available. So that's gonna be the next focus. I kinda wanna get some of the stuff built. Uh, we'll make that one lowest priority, lowest priority, lowest priority. 
lowest priority. And we'll let him build two. There we go. And on the left side, you can kind of see all of our stats, right? So at the top, it is our well-being score, our science points, which we use to unlock new items. Uh, this is how many materials are in our warehouse. This is how much food we have. This is logs, water. You can see the number of children and the number of adults we have. Uh, their homes or homeless. And the buildings and their employment level. So we have zero unemployed and we have all eight buildings fully employed. Now you can go to buildings and you can, you can pause the building, which would stop its produce production. Or you can reduce the number of employees. So I could take this and do one, two, three, so on and so on. And they will adjust what they're doing. Just to give us a little more water supply, we'll go ahead and demolish that. And it just kind of opens up a little bit of the land. Now, I made it to the first few buildings uh, after this point, and that's where I stopped and went, you know what, this is going to be awesome for the video. So, let's see. Now, on the right, you're going to see the view where you can change between the districts. Uh, the year and day, I'm a, the cycle and day, year and day, you can see the weather. So, when there's a drought, it'll actually start coming across there. You can adjust their work day, uh, how long or short you want to make it, which I believe can affect their well-being. And then the toggle your view stuff. There's water available for you guys. Go take a drink. So let's go ahead and speed up time and just see how much we can get accomplished. Now what this dam does, the dam is the simplest of devices. You got dams, levees, uh, floodgates, and explosives. The dam is a spillway on it. You can see when I look down, the water will get up to a certain height and then flow over it, which basically means it'll give us a reserved amount. The levee doesn't is a solid block. You can use it to completely stop the water flow or say over here, I wanted to build where this is, this would make this section too high. I could put the levee across and then put a dam across it and do the same concept where it'll just back up more water. Come on, little beavers. Show me what you can do. Uh, let's go ahead and up to that one's priority too. Other things we'll need, we'll need to build our storage. Oh, also, uh, along with the working hours, in the very right, there's a, a clock there. The yellow is their productive time. The blue is their off time, basically. Um, that one's getting there. Now we have our farmhouse. And we're gonna have them prioritize carrots, prioritize action, and leave it alone. But this one really doesn't matter just because we're only doing a single crop. Plant your carrots, got credit for it. 
Log pile, small warehouse, small water tanks. Oh, it only needed three. Okay. So let's look at our storage, log pile. Think about where we want to keep this storage stuff. I'm thinking we'll go ahead and put the houses back here. So we'll put the storage over on this side. Put the log pile right there. And the storehouse right there. In this storehouse, we're going to want to change some of the priorities for it once we get it built. One thing I learned was if you start producing different things, your warehouse could fill up really quick. I planted a lot of wheat in the beginning and I couldn't do anything with it. So that's a definite thing to pay attention to. This is one, two. Just like that, so I can build another one. I was looking for logs, guys. Nice. All right. Get ourselves a little bit more progress on here. I think the next step is I'm actually going to put a path right here and relocate this guy. Okay, so if I build Click it, demolish, yes, path there, and wood gatherers flag we'll put right there. That one is a high priority. Employed. these little guys go. Clearing out all those berries. This one's almost done and you can see if you actually look at the visual of it the water's actually stopped on the ones where it's at and it's all just flowing through that side. The water does actually dynamically change its height based on the amount there. more spots look at that you can see it like the speed of the water actually changes right through there so you could also do this stuff to kind of manage say water wheels you could levy a portion of it off and then have it all throw, flow through here where it's going to flow quicker and get more power versus right here you can kind of just see the the texture change so i believe that will actually affect it so right here where the water is more stagnant it'll produce a lot less power but at the same time if I did it, say, on this side during a drought, this will dry up, there won't be any water here, and I would lose power. One more, guys. We are almost done. Oh, you're hungry. says uh, this this beaver died of old age 
So I need to hurry up and get this going so I can get their houses built so we can have more. <laughs> so doing this, I think I came up with an idea for their housing. I think if I did it like this. Housing area with their. I didn't mean to click that one. Thank you for yelling at me. There we go. So now, as you can see, the water level on the back has actually risen and the water level on the side has fallen. And it'll rise up to the point, if you see, it'll get to a point where it will start spilling over. You can kind of see it right there already. And this is now built and I want to turn off everything but carrots and berries. So I can specify what is actually going to be stored here. Now, if you wanted to be quick, oh, they were producing a lot, you just, as soon as it's built, you click empty storage and it'll lock out everything and then you can start clicking the things. Right, and now we have shelter available. Let's see, so we need two more to actually cover our population and the rest will allow for growth. carrots already in reserve so hopefully we can get a little bit more than that and once these trees are cleared out right here we're actually going to extend our farmland over this way too I believe almost there guys come on get us a couple more logs So you kind of out of the ones in the district. Now this district boundary does affect where they will work at. So these trees over here, even though I highlighted them, they won't actually do any uh, harvesting over there. There's like a limit to their range. So like you can see like this one, its range is here. Uh, this one's mm, very well range. Oh, this one is, it, its range is large enough. Okay. So you can kind of see the range for each building. the rest of these to neutral we have enough housing to cover our oh we'll need one more yeah man hurry up and sleep guys go. Such busy little beavers. That should build the last house right there and now we have room to spare so hopefully we can get some more beavers. And build lodge four out of six. And the next thing we're gonna to wanna to look at making is for the science. Right here, we'll, we gotta figure out where do we wanna put the science. 
So we could put more housing right here, which I think is the plan. So I can kind of just make both sides. Uh, but I'm gonna put the science right there. Ooh, and they have achieved well-being number five. So now we have a steady supply of water. We've controlled our river flow. We have some housing. And once this gets built, we'll be able to earn points to start researching. I think the ratio is, uh, look at science. It's three game hours will give you three points. And we're going to want to start immediately unlocking some stuff. So things like the levee could, will help us in some spots. Uh, the increased water tank, but you'll need some more machines to get there. Uh, the grill, which will help us with potatoes. Uh, but the first one we want to go after is this forester, because that will allow them to replant. And maybe give them a campfire area for some leisure. You guys work on that one. Let's work on wood. Oh, so there's my drought countdown. It says in 2.9 days we are going to have a drought. Come on, guys. Let's build these last ones up get our water supply, so hopefully it'll be enough to cover our drought. Now, as like I said, as the, drought prog or as the game progresses, these droughts will get longer and longer and harder and harder. And it does a really cool effect. If you look around, you see all this dry land and you see this grassy land around, right? All the way back to the water source. Now, as the drought comes, this water source goes away and all of this will start turning to that gray dead color. Now if we didn't have the water backing up here, our crops could die, the trees could die, etc. Log, fellas. Look at that. Okay, now we have our science. And I'm gonna wanna go ahead and I will knock down one of my builders so they can come work over here and start collecting us points. We'll need to get 60 of them to do the Forester. Get digging. So we're about at the wrapping up point. So in between after this episode, I'm just gonna keep working. Uh, I'm gonna get that forester built so we can start replanting the trees and start building up our resources. And I'm gonna get ourselves some improved, uh, some extra housing available. Uh, eventually I would like to be able to unlock this double, shell, double lodge. You can do a single person one, double lodge. We're going to want to unlock the power stuff that we're going to be using with it, which the first big one we'll be using will be this uh, right here, lumber mill, which looking at this, we'll need that before we can get to the forester. So we'll start thinking about where are we going to put the lumber mill, where are we going to put the forester. I kind of think maybe we'll put them on this side over here. Take advantage of this space for the field. Nothing to do in range. If that works for me. We'll pause that one so he's fired. And we'll look at our lumber guy. So water wheel will go up. I'm thinking... Uh, let's see, what would be in range that will give us a benefit? Oh, while we're at the drought, let's go check it out, see how it's uh, 
all dried up over here. That's the effect of it. So the water wheel we're gonna put, I'm thinking right, honestly right here maybe. All right. Um, let's put it right. I think we can put that right. Nope, we can't. Uh, okay. Screw that, and we're going to have to figure out a better place for it. But like I said, so this water wheel is going to get put down. We'll get the lumber building up, and we will get the forest building up. And other than that, I'm just going to do some resource gathering, maybe a couple upgrades here and there. Not too much, because uh, I do want to kind of go out go through this with the, with the group. Let's see, so down. we can go ahead and destroy this one. And I'm gonna put a lumber gatherer right. And we'll let these resources build up. All right, so appreciate you guys stopping by. Let me know in the comments if this is something you guys wanna keep watching. And uh, until next time, stubby out.